Welcome back to the Comptia Network Plus course, Broadband Services. Before I get into telling you all about the WAN protocols required to meet the Comptia objectives, I've got to talk about cable modems and DSL as a solutions for connecting to WANs. I think briefing you on them will help you understand the practical differences between DSL and cable modem networking and they just happen to be the county objectives as well. Dedicated broadband services include transmission over media in a broad range of frequencies. The various forms of digital subscriber line DSL services are broadband in the sense that digital information is sent over a high bandwidth channel over the base and voice channel on the single pair of wires ethernet digital signals sent over a cable modem from your local cable television provider compete with dsl service although it's true that dsl and cable internet services do indeed have a lot in common they still have some basic essential differences that are really important for you to understand speed most people will tell you that cable is faster than dsl internet but they wouldn't be right because cable doesn't always win the race in the real world um, security dsl and cable are based upon different um, network security models and until recently cable has been the reputed a reputed loser in this contest but now it's pretty much a toss-up with both offering adequate security to meet the needs of most users and when i say adequate i don't mean anywhere near great there are still some very real security issues relating to both alternatives no matter uh, what your isp says uh, popularity um okay Cable internet is definitely best show in the United States, but DSL is beginning to catch up. Customer satisfaction, here the reverse is true in the United States. DSL is top dog still. Do you really know anyone who's satisfied with their ISP? Figure 16.4 shows how a connection can terminate from modems uh, to either a PC directly or to a router the two devices that lie between the router and the cloud and between the computer and the cloud represent the cable or dsl mode and typically your router would run a dynamic host configuration protocol dhcp on that interface as well as point-to-point -point protocol over ethernet ppoe which we discussed back in chapter 13 authentication and access control both dsl and cable high-speed internet services are available to millions of residential and business consumers worldwide but in some areas only one and sometimes neither service is available surprisingly some of the differences between dsl and cable modems have nothing to do with the actual technologies it comes down to the individual isp all other things being equal issues like cost reliability and quality of customer support for both installation and maintenance really do vary significantly from one provider to the next dsl technology and x dsl DSL is not a complete end-to-end -end solution. It is really a physical layer transmission technology like dial-up cable or wireless. DSL connections are deployed in the last mile of a local telephone network or local loop. The term last mile has been used quite a bit in the last few years with broadband type connections it basically means the same thing as a local loop and defines the physical connection for the customer to the first aggregation device of the provider network a dsl uh, sorry an a, a dsl connection is set up between a pair of modems on either end of a copper wire 
that is between the CPE and the digital subscriber line access multiplexer DSLAM. A DSLAM is a device located at the provider's CO that concentrates connections from multiple DSL subscri subscribers. XDSL is really a family of technologies that have become popular for data transmission over phone lines because XDSL uses regular PSTN phone wires to transmit digital signals and it is, and is extremely inexpensive compared with other digital communications methods. The X in XDSL represents the various letters that refer to different DSL flavors. XDSLs use high frequency signals whereas regular phone calls use lower frequency signals over the same line communicating via signals whereas regular phone calls use low frequency signals over the same lines communicating via XDSL requires an interface to a PC all XDSL configurations require a DSL modem called an endpoint and a network interface card in your computer the NIC can be connected directly to the DSL modem using a straight through Ethernet UTP patch cord with standard RJ45 connectors on each end. But, um, but if there were other connecting devices between the computer and the cable modem, you'll need either a special switchable port or an Ethernet crossover cable for things to work out well. A nice feature of XDSL implementations is that they cost tens of dollars instead of hundreds. Sometimes up to the thousands you would have to pony up for a dedicated digital point-to-point -point link like a T1. These cost-effective implementations include the following. High bit rate digital subscriber line HDSL. HDSL was the first DSL technology to use a higher frequency spectrum of copper twisted pair cables. HDSL was developed in the United States as a better technology for high speed synchronous circuits. It was typically used to interconnect local exchange carrier systems and to carry high speed corporate data links and voice channels using T1 lines, symmetric um, digital subscriber line SDSL. Symmetric meaning the same rate in both directions. Digital subscriber line SDSL provides T1 E1 type speeds symmetrically for both uploading and downloading data but doesn't allow low frequency phone calls on the same line as asymmetric digital subscriber line ADSL does. How much it will set you back ranges between the cost of ADSL and T1s. This option is typically used by small to medium sized businesses that don't require the higher performance of a lease line for connecting to a server. A very high bit rate digital subscriber line VDSL. VDSL or very high bit rate DSL um, provides faster data transmission over single flat untwisted or twisted pairs of copper wires. This capacity is blazingly fast speed means that VDSL is capable of supporting high bandwidth applications like HDV, sorry, HDTV and telephone services like the ever popular voice over IP VoIP as well as general internet access over a single connection. VDSL is deployed over existing wiring used for POTS and lower speed DSL connections. Second generation VDSL systems utilize bandwidths of up to 30 megahertz to provide data rates exceeding 100 megabits simultaneously in both the upstream and downstream directions. The maximum available bit rate is achieved at a range of about 300 meters with the signal performance degrading 
as the loop attenuation increases. Um, asymmetric data to subscriber line, ADSL. Asymmetric meaning different upload and download speed DSL has become the most popular X DSL because it focuses on providing reasonably fast upstream transmission speeds 768 kilobytes per second and very fast down uh, transmission speeds of up to uh, 9 megabits per second a DSL 2 plus can get you up to 20 megabits per second this makes downloading graphic video sorry this makes downloading graphics vid audio video and data files from any remote computer a snap the majority of web traffic is downstream the best part is that ADSL works on a single phone line without losing voice call um, capability this is accomplished with something called a splitter that enables the use of multiple frequencies on your POTS line cable modem cable is a great cost effective connection for a small office or home office SOHO yes this is an acronym for everything even large organizations cable or even DSL can be great to have around as a backup link here are a few um, cable network terms head end this is where all cable signals are received processed and formatted the signals are then transmitted over the distribution network from the head end um, okay distribution network these are relatively small service areas that usually range in size from 100 to 2000 customers they are typically composed of a mixed fiber coaxial or hybrid fiber coaxial HFC architecture with optical fiber substituting for the distribution network trunks portion the fiber forms both the connection from the head end and an optical node that changes light to radio frequency RF signals that are then distributed through a, through a coax cable throughout the specific service area that is your home or office data over cable service interface specifications DOCSIS this specification provides the interface requirements for data over cable system including that of high speed data transfer to a, an existing cable TV system all cable modems and similar devices have to measure up to this standard figure 16.5 shows where you would be likely to find the various types of networks and how the terms I've just listed would be used in a network diagram the area on the right where coax cable is in use is the distribution network and the box labeled node is the optical node where light is converted to RF signals for use on the coaxial cable the problem with this is that ISPs often use a fiber optic network to extend that extends from the cable operators masters head end sometimes even to a regional head ends out to neighborhoods hop site and finally arrives at a fiber optic node that serves anywhere from 25 to 2000 or more homes I'm really not picking on cable but here's another issue if you have cable open your PC's command prompt type IP config and check your subnet mask it's probably a forward slash 21 sorry it's probably it's probably a forward slash 20 or a forward slash 21 class B address yikes you already know that translates to either 4.094 or 2.046 hosts per cable network connection definitely not good your average cable connection gives you a maximum download speed of 20 megabits per second theoretically some providers sell this up to 50 megabits per second and remember you have to share that bandwidth with all the other subscribers as if that weren't enough there are other things like over 
loaded web servers and plain old network congestion the factor that sorry congestion that factor into the mix as well but your email checking neighbors really aren't making that much of a difference so who or what is really if you're an online gamer you'll likely notice a bit more lag during peak periods which could be a matter of virtual life and death and if somebody in your neighborhood is uploading a large amount of data like say an entire collection of pirated star wars movies it could definitely max out the entire connection and bring everyone's browser to crawl speed or worse cable modem access may or may not be faster or easier to install than dsl and your mileage will vary depending on where you live plus a variety of other factors but it's usually more available and a tad less pricey making it a winner by a nose but no worries if cable access isn't available in your neighborhood dsl is okay anything is better than dial up so i won't leave it here today for this video if you like listening please consider like share subscribe thank you